quite some time back I did a video showing uh, the reception of an uh, APT signal from a weather satellite. Um, I thought it'd be cool to go back and uh, do a more detailed video of how to receive an APT signal using one of these little RTL dongles and some uh, software called SDR Sharp. Now when I think of a weather satellite I normally think of one of the geosynchronous satellites that orbits at like 26,000 miles above the equator and uh, goes around at the same speed that the Earth turns so it appears to be stationary with respect to the ground. Um, those are the satellites where you get the beautiful full disk image uh, where it looks like you're just looking down and you can see the whole Earth right there. I think that's what most people normally think of when they think of uh, satellite weather imagery. Um, there are other weather satellites though that orbit at a lower altitude and go over or near the poles um, and so as the earth turns below them they can image strips and you know either on a south to north pass or a north to south pass um, and over time they can they can image the entire planet and because they're at a lower altitude the resolution can be better without um, you know, fancy optics or a, a high resolution sensor. Uh, these satellites transmit their imagery back to Earth using APT or automatic picture transmission. Uh, this is a raster image format. Um, the x-axis comes from the scanning of the imaging instrument in the satellite back and forth and the y-axis comes from the Earth passing under it or you know the satellite passing over the Earth. Um, so there's no um, the image doesn't have a specific height, it's just the height is whenever the satellite comes up over the radio horizon to when it goes back down. Um, so it depends on how much overhead the pass is. So the mo more overhead the pass, the more uh, vertical uh, data you'll get. The horizontal data is always the same and it actually includes uh, data from two different video channels that change depending on whether it's day or night. Um, and then also some telemetry and synchronization data so that you can um, you know reassemble it into a, a square square image. The transmitted signal is frequency modulated uh, it's like 34 kilohertz wide uh, and it's it's in the neighborhood of 137 megahertz uh, each satellite has its own frequency of course. Um, now the the 34 kilohertz bandwidth is tricky because like your average police scanner or that kind of radio um, is not going to have a wide enough bandwidth to receive the signal well, uh, which is why um, one of these RTL dongles works well. Uh, sp speaking of which, uh, let's talk about this for a second. These are sold in some parts of the world as a TV receiver uh, for over-the-air TV, um, but all that's really in here is a tuner and a fast analog to digital converter. Everything else happens in software. Now the sampling rate on this is on the order of uh, mega samples per second so uh, there's no no bandwidth issue uh, even for a TV signal. Um, the tuner it depends on which one you get what tuner chip you're gonna get and how it's set up um, but like on this one it goes from I think 50 megahertz to 2.2 gigahertz. Uh, there's, a, there's a gap in there around 1.2 gigahertz. Um, but basically, most of them are going to cover 130 mega, 137 megahertz, no problem. Uh, now, this particular one I got a long time ago, well, I don't know, a couple, two, three years ago anyway, but they're not making it anymore. Um, but there's a new one, well, there's many new ones, um, but there's one in particular from New Elect that's supposed to be the bee's knees. Um, so I'll put a link to that in the description for you. So the TV tuner software that comes with this thing isn't going to be real helpful to us. Um, in fact, I've never used it. Um, instead, we'll use a program called SDR Sharp, which is a software-defined radio program that works with these guys. And it can uh, set the tuner and uh, demodulate the audio. And then we'll send that demodulated audio over to WX2Image, which can decode the APT data from the audio signal. And also, um, align and geo-reference the imagery uh, so you have like a nice overlay map. Now WX2 image knows when the satellites are going to be overhead based on your location, the time, that kind of thing. Um, but SDR Sharp of course doesn't know anything about satellites. We use a program called Orbitron to predict the satellite passes and pass a data stream to SDR Sharp to set the tuning. 
Now, since the satellite's like really zooming past, we should take into account the Doppler effect, which Orbitron can also do. And so even during the pass, um, it's going to continuously update the frequency in SDR sharp to accommodate the Doppler shift and keep the center frequency where it belongs. So we'll also need an antenna. Uh, I built a quadrifiler helix based on plans from the 30STV website. Um, I don't have a picture of it, it's up in the attic right now, but uh, it basically looks like the rendering. It's made out of PVC and copper tubing. The gain pattern on this particular design is especially well suited to APT satellite reception. It's uh, stronger closer to the horizon, which is where you have more uh, atmospheric attenuation because the signal's coming through um, a thicker section of atmosphere when it's uh, low in the sky. All right, so those are the basic components you need, and it sounds pretty simple, but of course the real trick is getting all that software to play nice together. So let's take a journey into the computer, and I'll show you how I did that. Seems like there's a lot of steps to the software setup. Um, there's three different programs you need installed, plus a couple of plugins, or just one plugin, I guess. But uh, anyway, each thing has its own little quirks as to how it wants to be set up and, and all of that. Now, for for the receiver, uh, I found if I just plugged it in, Windows would install a driver I did not want. So the first thing I'll do is uh, disable getting drivers from Windows Update. <clears throat> you may or may not need to do this, and this is one of the things that will be most different between the different versions of Windows. I have Windows 7 on here. If you have something else, it'll be a little different. You go to the Hardware tab here on System Properties, Device Installation Settings. You choose No, and then uh, Never Install Driver Software from Windows Update. And once you're, once you're done setting this up, you can switch it back uh, which I will do, because uh, sometimes it's a handy thing. Okay, that's all set. Now the first thing we're going to do is install SDR Sharp. I've got some bookmarks here already set up. I'll put links in the uh, description for each of the things that you need to download. We'll extract these files. Now, <clears throat> this uh, install, or what you download, just gives you the, an install script that'll download the actual, like, latest version. So we'll run that now. And that gives us this folder here. Uh, there's no, like, it doesn't give you an icon or anything, or put, put this in a particular place, so. I'm going to <clears throat> move this to my uh, Documents folder. Just cut it here, over to Documents, paste it. Um, <clears throat> then I'd also like to have a shortcut in my Start menu for it. So let's go in here, find the program file. And um, Right click and create a shortcut. And we'll cut that shortcut. We'll go over here to the start menu, right click on all programs, hit open, and that'll open it in the <clears throat> explorer here. Under programs, we'll paste that uh, shortcut. I want to change the name of it here to just be SDR Sharp. Okay, so SDR Sharp's installed. Now we need to install the uh, driver for the receiver. I'll plug in the receiver. And it should, yep, perfect. It failed to find any driver software, which is expected. So now we'll use the Zadig program that came with SDR Sharp to install an appropriate driver. 
That's this guy here. Yep, that's fine. And up here you want to be sure you have this uh, bulk in interface, interface zero selected. Uh, it, depending on your receiver, it could say something a little different. Uh, it'd be probably something that starts with like RTL. Um, possibly you may have to come up here into the options menu and hit list all devices. Uh, I didn't. Um, over here under uh, driver you want to have uh, this win USB selected and if it if you need something different you can just click the little buttons here or roll up or down. So when you've got the bulk in interface, interface zero selected, win USB, driver selected, hit install driver and it'll hook that in there for you. And that's all for the driver. Now to hook the audio output from SDR Sharp to the audio input for uh, WX to image, uh, we need a little utility called uh, VB cable. And this just makes like a virtual loopback audio device. So there's like a fake uh, input audio device and a fake output audio device and they're just it just pipes one to the other. So we'll go download that. Again, these links are in the um, in the description. Yep, this is the one. They've got fancier versions of this that have, you know, more than one interface and all those things. So we'll save that. Extract it. And then uh, you run the setup program. I've got the 64-bit version of Windows 7 on here, so I'll run the X64 one. Uh, you may need the, the just plain one without the X64, depending. Uh, hang on. I'm sorry. You need to right-click and uh, run that as the administrator. There you go. Then you just hit install driver. Okay, no problem. And that's all for that. So now we want to grab WX2 image. Get a copy of that right here. Save. There we go. So just run the installer. Nothing too unusual with this installation. We'll do some configuration on it later. So after that, get rid of that. Uh, oh, you can leave it. I'm just not into it. Um, Now we want to install Orbitron. This is like the uh, satellite tracking program. Just grab the installer. Run that. Uh, some of the stuff in here I uncheck. You don't have to, but I just want the program, you know. Um, now, after it finishes installing, don't run it yet. Um, cause there's a, at least on Windows 7, there's a permissions issue with where it wants to store the, the TLE files, the two line elements that describe the orbit of the satellites. <coughs> So we got to come over here to the Orbitron folder under Program Files, and this TLE folder is the one 
that it tries to write to. So we'll go in here to properties, security, edit. I'm just going to give uh, users uh, modify access on this. And that way when it tries to write to it, it won't be a problem. All right, now we'll connect Orbitron to SDR Sharp so that it can control the receive frequency in SDR Sharp and correct it for Doppler shift and, and select the correct frequency for the satellite that's overhead at the time. Um, you need a plug-in for SDR Sharp called Satellite Tracker 2. I'll put a link to this. I've already got a copy of it downloaded. We'll just extract it. Come in here, and I'm going to open this README file and minimize it because we'll need a couple of lines out of that. To copy these files here. Go back to the SDR Sharp folder and we'll just paste them right in there. Then we'll go in there and we need to edit the um, plugins XML file. We'll open that with Notepad. Alright, so it was in this uh, readme file. We just need this, this line here. Copy. I'll minimize that again because I'm still going to need it. Oops. There we go. So that tells SDR Sharp about that plugin, and we copied the files it needs into its directory. Now we got to tell Orbitron what's going on. Come over here to its uh, folder under Program Files. Go into the config folder. Um, okay, so we, the setup.config file, we go into properties, security, give myself or give the users group modify on this. Setup config file, add that, those lines. Save that. And that's it. Um, now we can start running some things here. So we'll go into Orbitron. And yeah, we want to get the new TLEs. Hit this little uh, globe with the lightning bolt icon, it'll grab them from the internet. And uh, while we're in here, let's go over to the miscellaneous tab. I'm going to set this to the sat satellite elevation limit to 8 degrees to match what's in WX2 image. Uh, if you want to change it, just change it both places. Uh, I'm going to turn off this play sound too. But leave the show notice on because uh, we need that. Because then under extra, we'll hit this AOS notification, make satellite active. So what this will do is when it would show that notice, it'll make whatever satellite just came over the horizon, the active satellite, and it'll start um, sending frequency updates over to SDR Sharp for it. So we'll want that. <clears throat> Hit OK. Uh, let's get this out of full screen mode. It's this little arrows icon down here. Now we'll load the... Oh, I'm sorry. Let's not do that. Let's, uh, let's finish setting it up. We'll go to location, and here you can just type the name of a large city near you, um, click that, hit choose, and it'll load the uh, location data. If your city's not in here someplace nearby, <clears throat> you can put the longitude and latitude in manually. All right, now we'll load the two line elements for the NOAA satellites.
and we'll put check marks next to the ones that are active. Right now that's NOAA 15, 18, and 19. All right, now um, let's pop over to the rotor and radio control tab. I found I had to update the uh, <clears throat> the downlink frequencies on these. Uh, so NOAA 15 is at 137.62 right now. I don't know if this is important, but I set the downlink mode to FM wide. NOAA 18 is currently on 137.9125. And NOAA 19 is on 137.1. So the frequencies are all set. <clears throat> Over here under driver, we'll pick SDR sharp and activate it by hitting this little button. Now, this should only come up the first time you do this. Hit yes. And then we got to go find the SDR sharp uh, program. So it'll be under user, my documents, SDR sharp, there it is. And so this will actually start SDR sharp for you. I'm going to put that over here. There we go. Now we'll set up SDR sharp and get that going. So first we need to select the source. Uh, that'll be RTL-SDR slash USB. And uh, let's hit the gear icon and set that up. I found I needed to turn on the tuner AGC to get good performance. Um, and, you know, for your setup, maybe you need to adjust the RF gain or turn on the RTL AGC. Uh, it kind of depends on your receiver. Maybe on your antenna as well, I don't know. So we'll set that. And so we're done with the source section. Under radio, we want wide FM. Um, but the bandwidth is set to 180 kilohertz, like for a broadcast FM station. We don't want that. It's a little narrower. We want to put in uh, 34,000. I think, I think the signal's like 30 kilohertz, but 34,000 will give you a little slack um, in case a Doppler correction's a little off or something. Um, okay, so we're done with the radio section. Under the audio section, you want to set the output to that VB cable driver that we installed earlier, and turn off the audio filtering. We don't need the AGC section or the FFT section. Go down to the satellite tracker section, and here you want to tick enable and select Orbitron for the tracking software. Hit connect. And you should see, yep, here's the data from Orbitron, NOAA 19, and here's the frequency. You can see it updating. That's all you need there. Hit play, and you should see, um, see the spectrogram come up. And oh, excuse the the slow update rate. It'll look a lot smoother when you do it. I'm uh, connected to this machine remotely. Um, zoom in a little so we can see what's going on. That's pretty good. So NOAA 19 is not overhead right now. So you can see there's no signal. So let's uh, set up WX to image. We'll get that going. First thing we want to do is set up the uh, ground station location. Uh, just like in Orbitron, we need to tell it where we are. So that's under options, ground station location. And uh, I've used this before, so it's already set up. Um, but you can type in, again, like a nearby city, hit look up, or you can just put in the latitude and longitude for your location. Um, we also need to set the recording options. And in here is where you can set this record only when active APT satellites are overhead. 
Um, this will only record when the maximum elevation for the satellite pass is going to be 20 degrees or higher. You may want to set that even higher. <clears throat> um, you're only going to get a good signal um, at relatively high elevation angles. Uh, if you use a stationary antenna like a QFH, um, and also the, when the maximum ele elevation angle is pretty high, that means that the satellite passes more directly overhead, and so those are probably the images that are more interesting. Um, I think these are the defaults, 8 degrees, so it won't start recording until the, the satellite's 8 degrees above the horizon. If you have any kind of trees or if you're just on top of a hill, um, that's probably a good setting. If you're down in a hole, you might want to even run that up. Uh, either way, just set it the same in Orbitron. Um, so they'll kind of be in sync. Um, under the sound card, just pick that uh, cable output. That's that loopback driver. That's all we need there. Now we'll go over to file. We'll get updated Keplerian elements. This is the same as what we did in Orbit trying to get the new TLEs. So it just grabs those from the internet. We'll go to uh, File, Record, and we're going to set the, uh, the volume level. So we'll hit Manual Test, and down here, this volume bar, you want that to be in the green uh, when you're receiving a signal, um, or maybe, you know, around 50% or so when there is no signal. Um, what I found is to just max the volume out in SDR Sharp got me where I wanted to be. Uh, you may need to tweak it a little more. Uh, yeah, 70%. It works good when a, when a signal's coming in. It's fine. Um, so we'll go to File, Stop. And uh, we can check when there'll be a satellite pass coming. You go to File, Satellite Pass List. The next one here is at uh, 202 local time. It's 1040 right now. So uh, we'll give you some magic time travel here in a minute so you can see um, what the reception looks like. Uh, but in the meantime, I'm going to do some other things and have some lunch. That's no problem. We can come in here to record and hit auto record. And now SDR Sharp's just going to wait and see the description down here is just going to wait uh, until the appropriate time and what's going to happen is uh, Orbitron is going to be watching these and uh, when NOAA 19 comes over the horizon on the next pass it's going to, well it's already on it, but it, if it weren't it would switch to it and it'll start sending uh, Doppler updated frequencies over to SDR Sharp. You can see that's already going, it's at uh, 238 now, 238, just switched to 235 so that's communicating. So uh, I'll let this go, and we'll come back to it uh, around 2 o'clock, and we'll watch it uh, receive that pass. So that's it. Through the science of magic and technology, we can look down on the clouds from above and see what they look like from there. Uh, 
If you enjoyed the video, which I hope you did, give it a big thumbs up. And if this is the kind of thing you're into, hit that subscribe button because I got more coming.